In this lesson, you will learn about the graph elements that make a Neo4j graph a property graph. Recall that nodes are the graph elements that represent the things in our data. We can use two additional elements to provide some extra context for the data. Let's take a look at how we can use these additional elements to improve our social graph. By adding a label to a node, we are signifying that the node belongs to a subset of nodes within the graph. Labels are important in Neo4j because they provide a starting point for a cipher query. Let's take Michael and Sarah. In this context, both of these nodes are persons. We can embellish the graph by adding more labels to these nodes. Michael identifies as a male and Sarah is female. In this context, Michael is an employee of a company, but we don't have any information about Sarah's employment status. Michael works for a company called Graph Inc., so we can add that label to the node that represents a company. Note that in Neo4j, a node can have zero, one, or many labels. So far, we're assuming that the nodes represent Michael, Sarah, and Graph Inc. We can make this concrete by adding properties to the node. Properties are key value pairs and can be added or removed from a node as necessary. Property values can be a single value or a list of values that conform to the cipher type system. By adding first name and last name properties, we can see that the Michael node refers to Michael Faraday, known for Faraday's law of induction, the Faraday cage, and lesser known as the inventor of the party balloon. Michael was born on the 22nd of September, 1791. Sarah's full name is Sarah Faraday, and her maiden name is Barnard. By looking at the name property on the Graph Inc. node, we can see that it refers to the company Graph Inc. with the City of London, has 56 employees by the Num Employees property, and does business as Graph Inc. and GI in the DBA property. Note that in Neo4j, properties do not need to exist for a node with a particular label. If a property does not exist for a node, it is treated as a null value. In Neo4j, each relationship must have a direction in the graph. Although this direction is required, the relationship can be queried in either direction or ignored completely at query time. If we consider the concept of directed and undirected graphs that we discussed in the previous module, the direction of the married to relationship must exist and may provide some additional context, but can be ignored for the purpose of the query. In Neo4j, the married to relationship must have a direction. The direction of a relationship can be important when it comes to hierarchy, although whether the relationship points up or down toward the tree is an arbitrary decision. Each relationship in a Neo4j graph must have a type. This allows us to choose at query time which part of the graph we will traverse. For example, we can traverse through every relationship from Michael, or we can specify the married to relationship and end up only at Sarah's node. And here are sample query statements to support this. As with nodes, relationships can also have properties. These refer to a cost or distance in a weighted graph or just provide additional context to the relationship. In our graph, we can place a property on the married to relationship to hold the date in which Michael and Sarah were married. This works at relationship has a rules property to signify any rules that the employee has filled at the company. If Michael also worked at another company, his works at relationship to the other company would have different values for the role property. This completes our look at the graph elements that make a Neo4j graph a property graph.